Hey everybody, we will continue with our IJPP discussion. Today also we are continuing with the January, March 2023 uh, uh, journal. We will discuss medication errors in PICU. I will not go according to the same order in which it is given in this um, article. Slightly front and back we will go. Okay, we should know what is normal to define an abnormal. So what is normal meaning what is safety? Freedom from accidental injury is safety. Okay, so if an accidental injury is happening or things have not gone according to your plan, then that is called as an error. Okay, so error can be of two types. It's either a planning error. You have not planned to achieve the end result correctly or a execution error. You have planned, but you are not able to execute it either because you have committed a, a commission error or an omission error. You have committed to a wrong path or you have omitted one of the steps that you need to follow to achieve the end result. Okay, so this is error. What is medication error? You have given a medication and it has resulted in an error. That's it, correct? Huh? So, in medication error, there are two components to it. Remember that. One is giving the wrong medication. Okay, plus or minus harm. It may or may not result in harm to the patient. Okay, so that is your medication error. So, in this medication error, you define it as a preventable event that may cause or lead to inappropriate medication use, plus or minus patient harm, while that medication is under your control. You have written everything correctly, patient has understood correctly, but due to some reason, some error has happened, then that is not your fault, correct? So, in this, you talk about a Adverse drug event in this medication error. Okay, so adverse drug event is where uh, injury has resulted from medication use. Okay, that injury can be physical harm, mental harm or loss of any function. And this adverse drug event can be again divided into preventable or non-preventable. So I would prefer you put this as a, um, this, 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 what do you call that? Rebranch classification system. Okay, so if you do like that, I think it will be easier for you to remember. So, preventable is uh, usually a human error. Okay, non-preventable is secondary to the pharmacological properties of the drug. That event is going to happen, whatever you do, whatever you don't do. Say, for example, you're taking ibuprofen, you expect some amount of gastritis to happen, right? So, you cannot prevent that adverse event from happening. You can manage that or treat that by giving some other medication. Okay, so that's preventable and non-preventable. And... There is another component adverse drug event, which is potential adverse drug event. Potential drug event is where an error has happened, but it has not caused harm to the patient. Okay. So, this is all the classification system. The same thing is put as a relationship in the next page. There's a big ground which calls as a medication error. And then there's a potential adverse drug event where if the error happens, there is a possibility that it can cause harm. And you can either intercept it or not intercept it. Intercept is you have prevented that thing from happening. If you have not prevented, that error could have happened. Non-intercepted error. You did not realize something is going wrong. Medication has gone. But fortunately, luckily for you, no adverse event has happened to the patient. Okay. Then if there is an adverse event which is actually happening to the patient, then you see whether it is a preventable or a non-preventable. Here, the meaning of preventable, non-preventable is slightly either. Yeah? So, preventable is where human error happens. Non-preventable is where pharmacological properties lay in there. There is an adverse drug reaction. So, which are the settings in which uh, these adverse drug events or a medication error can happen? Like you say with any infection, host factor, infection factor and an environmental factor. Either you, you put it as host factor. Okay, so which is the high risk population? Children, elderly, people who already have comorbidities, correct? Second, the infectious agent in the solar here it is going to be the drug. Okay, yeah. So high risk drugs, which has the potential to cause harm. This uh, anticoagulant, antihyperglycemic agents, sedative drug, narcotic agents, antibiotics. So these are all high risk drugs. Then you talk about environment. Here the environment is going to be what a critical care unit. Critical care unit, especially at night times when everybody is exhausted from 
uh, you know, too much continuous duties or patient load, night shifts, weekends, these are all high risk settings. Okay, so these are the situations in which chances for medication errors goes up. So how do you classify the severity of those medication error? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. I'm not teaching my son alphabets, I am forgetting now. Okay, so severity of harm, how do you classify? A, le, there is a setting for an error to happen, but it has not happened. Okay, B, le, setting is there. Error has occurred, but it has not reached the patient. Meaning you have stopped the error from happening. See, you did not see it and the error has happened and it has reached the patient, but it did not cause a patient harm. D, it has reached the patient and you had to monitor the patient for some time to make sure nothing has happened and nothing happened. So that is category D. E, error has happened and there is some harm to the patient. Okay. And it required some form of intervention. But the patient went home immediately. If la, harm has happened, it required hospitalization. That is F. G la, harm has happened, hospitalization has happened and this harm is a permanent harm. So from G, it is permanent harm. Before that and all, it is temporary harm. H, la, it required an intervention necessary to sustain life. Like, for example, a paralytic was given. Recently, there was in um, a newspaper, uh, there was a lot of uh, about for a MRA, uh, they had given a paralytic agent in the US or UK somewhere. Correct? So, this required intervention that was necessary to sustain life. I is where the patient loses life. Okay? So, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Correct? So, these are all the severities of harm that can happen. What are all the Types of medication error or a flow of medication error, you can imagine it as. Okay. Number simple, you are going to prescribe in a K sheet, correct? A K sheet, a treatment chart, you will write some medication, correct? So, prescription itself contains error. You might have written a wrong drug, wrong dose, wrong route, wrong duration of administration, wrong frequency, wrong form of the medication, or patient is allergic, but you have entered. So, these are all prescription errors. Transcription error is where it is understood wrong. Okay, you write something, then somebody else indents it on the system or on the note, then goes to the pharmacy to get the medication, then you get correct. So, this is the flow pattern for any medication that you prescribe. So, first is prescription. Second is transcription, where you indent, you write and go so that you can get it from the pharmacy. So, that point like, there is a problem. So, that is transcription. Then preparation. Suppose this medicine needs to be prepared at the pharmacy. Say you have a, a solid form of medication that needs to be prepared into a liquid form of medication, but wrong strength, wrong formulation, wrong um, drug. So that preparation itself is wrong. Then that is a preparation error. They are sending the medication from the pharmacy to you but they dispense the wrong medication to you, correct? So that is dispensing error. Again, it is wrong drug, wrong dose, wrong route. All of those will come. Root or uh, other, but um, uh, how to tell? Wrong strength, wrong combination of medications and all will come, okay? So dispensed, it has come to you. Till, the, till now, everything is fine, but the administration of the medication is wrong. It is given to the wrong patient, wrong drug is given, wrong strength is given, wrong route is given, wrong duration is given. Okay, or incompatibility in mixing of the medication with a solution, correct? So, this is administration error. Then M is monitoring. During giving the medication, you need to monitor what is happening to the patient, correct? So, if monitoring is wrong, then you end up having adverse drug reaction. So, these are all the types of medication error. So, how do you approach this error? There is something called as a Swiss cheese model of error. So, Swiss cheese model of error is where you have seen this Tom and Jerry cheese, no? so many holes will be there. Imagine there are some three to four cheese blocks that are present. Okay. Not all of the holes are in the same place, same location. Everything is in different, different location. If all those holes align with each other, then that medication error reaches the patient. Otherwise, it does not. So, which are all the places? Same, the same prescription, transcription, preparation. You remember and you can write. You have written 
it is going to the pharmacy in the wrong information it is prepared in the pharmacy as a wrong medication it is coming to you the nurse is not vigilant the supervisor is not vigilant and during giving it is not monitored okay so this is swiss cheese pattern if all the holes align each other then it reaches the patient and it causes harm okay so that is how you're supposed to analyze the medication error also when you do a root cause analysis as to why this has happened this is the same route in which you have to go so how do you prevent a medication error from happening this same prescription transcription yeah you remember okay yeah so uh, one two three four some nine to ten points are there in prevention go to four and five first so from your side when the patient has come to you you do something called as medical reconciliation you ask them what medication they have been on you write it down in a medical reconciliation form and in your prescription pad then you re check with the parents or the patients that whether the same medication same dose same strength same frequency is going whether it is correct that is medical reconciliation then you write your prescription for whatever the patient has come to you right now so for that you need to be updated about what is the recent changes any adverse events you're supposed to expect that any change in um, guidelines are present for that particular medication and you check the right dose strength root double check don't be very vague in your prescription and you need to write everything in capital letters okay and mention specific dosage and don't write one tablet of paracetamol it needs to be 650 mg of tablet paracetamol taken as when necessary allah should not write you should write every six hours everything should be in capital so that it is clear to the patient any medication that is not very clearly legible to the pharmacist is considered as a potential for an adverse event okay and if you need to give a telephonic consultation it needs to be only during an emergency and the pharmacist at the other end should read it out back to you asking whether it is correct and the number of the dosage say for example if it is say 75 60 something like that then they need to put it as six zero they need to tell it back to you as six zero whether it is right or wrong, not 60, because it can be heard by you as 16 or 60. Okay, so that your prescription and transcription part will be correct. Now coming to the pharmacy part, pharmacy part, the pharmacist also needs to be aware of what is stored, what is the, um, the expiry date for those medications. Okay, then they need to store the medication correctly. Storing, uh, you know, uh, first in, first out, needs to be followed lookalike sound alike medication needs to be separated clearly labeling has to be done clearly and certain medication should be present only in certain locations it should not be present everywhere all right so this is about storage then if they need to prepare a medication in the pharmacy it needs to be done in a clean ventilated environment and independent double check of the preparation needs to be done by a second person and then after preparing, they are going to dispense the medication to you. If it is a high risk medication, a second person again needs to recheck whether this medication is prepared appropriately, labeled appropriately and reconfirm whether it's actually needed for the patient. Then it reaches you and you are going to administer to the patient. Five rights of patient medication administration is right patient, right drug, right dose, right route and right time. Okay, these five hours, if you remember, that's more than enough. If you have a barcode system, it will lessen the number of medication errors. You can have automated alert systems that can be implemented in your hospital. But make sure you um, ask that machine to alarm only for the right needs. If you have too many alerts that are happening, alert fatigue will happen. If you hear continuous alarms, you get tired like what? Why is this continuously alarming? You want to just, you know, turn off the alarm. You don't want that to happen. You need it to respond to Baba. Sorry, my son got up from sleep. So you need to set the alarm correctly. Okay. And now that this administration part is over, then you need to monitor what is happening. Monitoring them, you make sure that the nurse is aware of how long this medication is supposed to go. Um, what is that that she or he is supposed to monitor for any reaction, any rashes, any hypotension, any hypoglycemia they need to monitor for. So that monitoring is important. Similarly, after the medication is over, sometimes you may need to send some drug levels, say for example, anti-epileptic drug phenytoin, you may need to send or say vancomycin antibiotic if you are using, then you need to send. And then what else? Enoxaparin, if you are using anti-10A levels, you will need to send. 
you need to know at what point in time you're supposed to send those uh, uh, levels. Okay, so you need to have an alert for that. So if you follow all of this, then the chances of medication error is reduced. In case you end up having a medication error, then you need to provide a safe environment. One, two, you need to provide safety for the um, second victim. The second victim will be the person who has administered the medication. They are guilty. They feel very, very guilty, okay, that they have done an error. So there's no point in trying to, you know, harass them further. Your idea of doing a root cause analysis is to identify it, which part of the system has failed and not point at a person to tell that they have caused an error. Okay. So once you have identified the system error, you can take measures to uh, how to tell, correct those errors from happening again. Okay. And the quality improvement initiatives can be done. Quality improvement, there is a table which has given you two quality measures. Patient, uh, you know, the patient, medication, patient with medication error and medication errors per patient. You can go through that. It's pretty easy to you with the marker. Touch, hmm? touch. Okay, yeah. So how do you detect an event? You need somebody to voluntarily report to you. But the problem is many people do not know or unaware or afraid to make a report thinking that they will be harassed. That's the most common reason. You can have a pharmacist who goes around, checks those medications. The best way to prevent things from happening is to have a direct observation by trained staff. Again, you need enough manpower and those manpower needs to be trained so that this does not happen again. All right. So these are all the challenges also that exists along with prevention of a medication error. If you know this much, you can um, manage medication errors in your unit and you can also write a short note in case this question is asked. So if they ask about medication error, definitions, you put that uh, branch diagram. Okay, so you can talk about um, safety, error, medication error, adverse drug event, preventable, non-preventable, then potential adverse drug event, like interceptable, non-interceptable. Then you talk about the uh, different um, settings in which a medication error can happen, different levels of severity of medication errors. Okay, how do you, uh, or why does such a thing happen, the Swiss cheese model? How do you prevent it at various levels? If you write this much, this is more than enough. Okay, bye bye. I need to get my son back to sleep. Chuck, 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 chuck